Welcome to my lecture online. Due to lack of board space, I couldn't finish the previous problem on this one board. And so we left off at this point. I kind of reassembled things a little bit. But what we were trying to do is find the step response of this series RCL circuit. It ended up being an underdamped case. So we found the general equation right here. We found the values for A1 and A2. When we plug A1 and A2 in there, we got the equation for the voltage as a function of time. Then by taking the derivative of, of course, of a product, we end up with this equation right here. Now we just have to clean up that equation and then find the current as a function of time. To do that, we're going to use this equation right here, the relationship between the current, the capacitance, and the change in the voltage with respect to time. All right, so let's clean that up a little bit. We can now say that dVdt is equal to, now notice, we have the cosine times e to the minus 0.5t, and again we have the cosine here times e to the minus 0.5t. We just have to combine the constants. So I have minus 12 times the negative 0.5, that is 6. And then over here we have uh, plus 1.9365 times a2, so plus 1.9365 times a2, now a2 we have over here, which is 21.689. And all that is, is multiplied times the cosine of 1.9365t. Now we need to get the sine portion of that, so we have a2 times the negative 0.5. So we have uh, Let's see here, okay, we'll put parentheses around that. So we have plus A2, where am I here? Point, negative points times A2, A2, which is right here, 21.689. It's easy to get confused here, so I have to be careful. So it's, um, oh, I'm lost again. Where am I here? Uh, right here. Sine, so I have A2 times a negative 0 0.2, 0 0.5. So that's negative 0 0.5. That's on this portion of the equation. At the bottom here, we have plus 23.238. Plus 23.238. And that would be times the sine. Close the bracket here. So times the sine of, of 1.9365 and then multiply the whole thing by, well, e to the minus 0.5t. Uh, that's a little messy there, but that's that portion right here. Terrible. It does look terrible, doesn't it? All right, let me clean that up a little bit. <laughs> I was trying to be lazy, and lazy doesn't help, does it? So that is times the sine of 1.9365t. That closes the parentheses from here, and then the whole thing is multiplied by the exponent e to the minus 0.5t. There we go. Okay, a little bit better. Now we just have to add everything together. So we have 21.689 times 1.9365. It's 42 plus 6. 48. Oh, a nice round number, which is actually amazing, right? So I have dVdt is equal to 48 times the cosine of 1.9365t. And then plus, I think it's a plus, we'll find out. Uh, we have 23.238, 23.238. Uh, minus 0.5 times 21.689. That's 12.39. So it would be plus 12.3935. I'll just keep a few decimal places. Times the sine of 1.9365t. And then the whole thing is multiplied times e to the minus 0.5t. Okay, now we go back over here and we realize that the current I 
is equal to c times dv dt. So that means that I simply have to multiply this times c, and c is one quarter. So that's equal to one quarter dv dt. So that means that the current as a function of time is equal to one quarter of this, that would be 24 divided by 2, that would be 12, so 12 times the cosine of 1.9365t plus a quarter of that. So divide by 4, that gives me 3.1, 3.1 times the sine of 1.9365t, all times e to the minus 0.5t. And now we have also found the equation for the current, and of course that would be the current through the inductor, as a function of time. Notice there's no steady state current, it's only a transient portion, because eventually, since this is a serial circuit, the capacitor will fill full of charge, no current will flow to the circuit again, and the current will simply stop as enough time has elapsed. And that's then the equation for the current in the circuit. And that is how it's done.